Hello and welcome to 360 Gamecast, episode 208 for Tuesday the 28th of May 2024. I'm your host Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pearson ID, Steam ID, Webby 360G, and joining me on this very fine evening is... It's Graham, or G Hamox 14. I'm back, I didn't die, it's Nick Fights. And I'm still here, since I switch. Wow, this is the first time in ages that all four of us have been on at the same time. Bob's full hands. <laughs> I just can't believe it. It is a Christmas miracle in the middle of the or summer. It's the bank holiday weekend, so we haven't got to get up at four in the morning. Well, true that, yeah. Oh, I do like a bank holiday weekend. Just very relaxing. I it's actually, very British, so all the yeah. thunderstorms we've had all day. Well, we only had a little bit of rain here. I actually went out this morning for a bike ride with my little boy and my little girl. Did you put WD-40 on it? Always, mate. Stop I meant your knees, not the bike. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. My, my butt is so sore right now. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You whoop, whoop. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's get into it then. So... I'm quite liking doing the news before the games we've played, so we'll do that again, actually. Uh, There's only been a little bit of... (coughs) Excuse me, a little bit of news that I could find anyway. So, and this is... One has actually been disregarded as not happening, but I thought it might make for a good discussion topic. Um, And that is that there was rumours circling around the interwebs this past week that Xbox were looking at buying Steam for $16 billion. Wow. Yeah. Now, obviously, Gabe Newell already said donkeys years ago that he would never sell Steam anyway. That seems Um, pretty low, considering what they paid for. But I thought that's like (laughs) like $16 trillion or something. $16 billion. I mean... It's got to be worth more than Activision Blizzard, surely. You yeah. would have thought, no? What what better way for yeah. Microsoft, who are constantly bleeding money from their uh, gaming divisions, to just throw more of it about? Plus, well, actually, I've just changed my mind, because um, it's only a distribution platform. They don't actually make their own games anymore. Like, Valve hasn't made a game for donkey's years, have they? So it's just a middleman... Like, mm. You know what? It's just a launcher for games and a store to it sell. It is the yeah, best one, know. though. It is still the best. I just, I just still find that hilarious. How Steam is just everybody loves it so much. Yeah, I remember when it came out. It just everybody hated it with a passion. It, yeah. And it's just like, oh, I don't want to install this to play Half Life Two. Fuck you, Gabe Newell and Valve. We hate you. This is never gonna you know, take off. Who wants to buy games digitally? And it just exploded. Well, I think what Valve has done right, and I know you guys aren't real proper PC gamers, so I'm going to do my best to try and explain it. It is the easiest, it's the launcher that's the most easy to use, has the most simple layout. Everything just works. And all your games are pretty much in one place for the majority, you know. Obviously, there's lots of other launchers. But when you look at Steam, right, and you look at the store, and you look at your library, and it's all just nicely laid out, and it's just no fart arsing around. And then you launch the Xbox app, or you launch EA, or Ubisoft, or one of the other launchers, and it's just a slow... They're full of bloat. It's just really, this just doesn't look as good. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's no wonder Steam is just the, the creme de la creme of just launchers on PC. It doesn't seem to have changed for over a decade, if not longer. Well, what, what if it ain't broke? Don't fix it, right? You know, I mean, it exactly. seems like, it's like if they still had the blade from 360 on Xbox Series X. Do you know what I mean? And the the Microsoft tiles, which everyone fucking loved. Yeah. You know, and and Valve do still make stuff. Obviously, they they got the hardware stuff, haven't they? They got the VR headset that's that that's done very well, and obviously the Steam Deck. So um, the only thing I'll say, which is good, is because like I said, Robbie, I was into PC gaming before Steam. 
Yeah. And it was a fucking nightmare to just get anything to run. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much went from, like, late 90s, early 2000s, and you'd install a game off, like, many CDs or DVDs, or, you know, it would barely launch, and you'd have to run it in compatibility mode and all that kind of crap. And then, like, I remember the first one I got properly was the first Far Cry. And it was like, oh, I'm playing the game, and everything was just white. And I'm like, why is it white? Oh, you've got to download this, and you've got to go to, you know, Ubisoft this, and download this patch, and update this, and, you know, download DivX, whatever it was. And it was just an absolute pain just to get any game to run. And obviously, EA with Battlefield, you had to go to their website to get everything. Whereas with this, it's just update, all right, or install, done. And it does the updates for you. So that's, you know, it's good. It made, it's made PC gaming simple. Yeah. And, and, I think and that's it, why, like you said, how simple it is. It just works. You don't have to go chasing things. It's all, you buy it through there. Everything goes through there. You're sorted. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the thing I find with Steam, and this is why, um, I, I'm surprised that other games companies haven't tried to copy it really with their launches because it is very simple to use. It's really, it is definitely the easiest, um, and it and and the, the way it makes money is it's like a con. It's like with with the consoles, right? They charge the game pub publishers a cut, I think it's like 20% to have the game on their store, you know, and that's kind of what the consoles charge publishers as well. Right. Um, you know, so that's how they make a lot of their money. Obviously they've got the hardware. They, you know, they do update their games. You, you know, counter strike is still the most pop popular game on steam every day without fail. Um, you have know, they changed that now? Counter Strike Go? Have they changed Counter Strike it? Two now? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought. I wondered whether I thought I'd accidentally bought it. No, no, no. So, um, yeah. So, so I think that's probably why Microsoft would want to buy them out, even though it's not going to happen. Just because everyone, all PC gamers, prefer to use Steam. Um, I mean, I even know some PC gamers in our community that would pay more for their games to buy on Steam, and, and I've seen them do it. Like I, you know, especially with with the Ubisoft games, they usually yeah. come out a tenner cheaper on on the Ubisoft Connect launcher. But I've seen people in our Discord buy them on Steam anyway at the extra price point just because they want to have it in their Steam library instead. So, you know, and, 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 it, and it does go show because you've got the Epic Game Launcher, which they've put a lot of free games on there and people still don't don't want to use it, even though they've charged no. so much free stuff on there. Yeah, they used to give you a free game. I don't know if they still, like every Thursday or something. Yeah. For a week. And there was quite a few. I think I've got an account and added loads to my account. But I, yeah. I think I deleted the launcher off my laptop the same as xbox because it just wasn't very good and once you loaded it up it would sometimes freeze and crash and you'd click something it's like oh i'll yeah. click that and then yeah. it just sit there for ages with you know the little spinny wheel thing yeah and i'm like oh yeah and you know and gab's just reminded me in the chat hello gav who's listening live it just reminded me that it is easy to get refunds on Steam. So if you played a game for less than I think two weeks, two hours, nice two hours. Yeah, if you played less it for less than, than two, hours. two hours within two weeks as well, yeah. um, you can get an automatic re refund. You can on get it, that on good. Xbox as well. Yeah, but on but PC that's quite. Like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's really easy to do on Steam compared to other platforms. Yeah. Um, I think you have to jump through a few more hoops and contact customer service. So, so when you do that on their web, do you just click through a setting? Or yeah, do you yeah, it's in your um, in the help section. Oh, so, you so you Steam don't section. actually have to speak to it. No, I think we literally Xbox, just do it here. You have to email and wait for a response yeah. and then stuff like that. You literally just go into like here, like while well, I'm showing you on the stream, and you mm. click on the game, and then there's there's one to get a refund. Obviously, I can't on this because I've got this. Uh, 
I got that ages ago. But I'm just looking at my profile and I've just noticed um, I've been on Steam for 18 years. That makes me feel really old. <laughs> you are really old. Oh, I know. Wow. Um, 18 years, baby. Yeah. So they oh, haven't wow. released a game since, uh, was it the the Orange Box since no, then, is no, it? They, they they have actually. So they actually released... Um, oh, Portal 2, like that's separate. One. No, yeah, no. Portal 2 was... Yeah, they released that VR game, yeah. So they... Oh, Half-Life Alex. Yeah, and let's have a look. Because I, I did have it up on my screen a minute ago. Yeah. A game for the Steam Deck called a Aperture De Desk Job in 2022. Um, so that's a tie-in from yeah. Portal. Portal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Then you had Half-Life Alex in 2020. Um, Aperture ha Hand Lab in 2019. So that would have been for the VR game I've never heard of, Dota Underlords in 2019. And they pushed out a game in right. 2018 called Artifact. It was a card game, and I really liked it, actually, but it kind of died a death because I think I was kind of in my, in the minority. So, yeah. It's all good. So, yeah, I, I, and, I, and when I initially saw this news, I was thinking, oh, no, please, please don't let Xbox buy Steam because, you know... I, because I was all up for them buying Activision and that, and obviously the stories that we mentioned last week of all the layoffs and all that sort of stuff. I was just thinking, no, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with it. You know, with with Microsoft owning the biggest bloody gaming platform on PC, I would just just it would destroy me. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's not going to happen. They've already but, got yeah. their own launcher anyway, haven't they, Xbox? Yeah, it's here, like, so it's shown on the screen now. So it's actually not as bad as I... as I kind of mentioned. They, they have improved it a lot. So all the games I've installed are on the left-hand side here. And you've got your Game Pass thing here, and you can see what's recently added, and you can install it. So it's actually, the Xbox app on PC now isn't that bad. Um, but it's just not. I think when I started soon. using it, it was the same as you, Webby, when they brought it out, when Game Pass started, so obviously they must have updated it over the years, but yeah, it's just the fact that Steam works pretty much flawlessly, yeah. and they bring something out, even though they said that was in beta, people are just like, nope, Steam's better. So yeah. unless, unless it comes out and it's just better than Steam, nothing's going to topple it, is it? No. So, so does that. Um, I'm just going to briefly mention this next bit of news, though, because I just, I was just thinking, oh my god, Ubisoft, what are you doing? Um, so obviously we talked last <laughs> week about um the new Assassin's Creed, and instead of a Japanese character, they decided to add a black man as a samurai. Okay. Um, but new more news came out this week that both of the main characters are going to be LGBT. Oh, dude. And I was thinking, hang on, does that really fit with the narrative of ancient, you know, I mean, when was the samurai era? I don't know the, the years. I mean, it's like, what, the 1600s or before, isn't it? You know, like really early days. Yeah. Um, it's clickbait, mate. All, all it is, in my opinion, is they're going to give you the option. That's it, like they did century. with um, with the uh, with the previous games. Right. So yeah, the 12th yeah, century. So wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's written. Wow. 1200s. 12 to 11. Yeah, the late 1100s to the early 1300s. Um, so the they ran into issues before, didn't they, with Odyssey because they allowed people to choose who they wanted to sleep with, but yet the characters were straight because in the storyline they have children right. <laughs> with someone they really love. So, like, there was people were kicking up a fuss about that. Right. Yeah. It just seems. I just think right. if you've got a narrative story, then just keep it to to what it should be. Don't give people the choice. Yeah. Cool. So I just wanted to mention that because I was just like, what? What are they doing? I just don't understand this. 
this thought process. If I was right? Ubisoft, I would actually be pissed off with the, the publication that put that out. Yeah. Because it would put more people off buying the game. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, there's that. Um, so, the new Black Ops trailer launched. Uh, Black Ops 6 is coming out later this year. Uh, it's going to be called, cool. yeah. I reckon it's going to be called Gulf War. The, a, a teaser trailer came out this past week, which is kind of like body cam footage. Like old school, like on a VHS tape. And it ends with um, that monument in America with the four presidents uh, with a load of writing over them saying the yeah. truth yeah. lies. Looks quite interesting actually, because because I think the Black Ops campaigns are usually pretty decent. So yeah, they have got a good following. Yeah, definitely. So I'm quite looking forward to this actually, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was quite quite cool just to see that trailer. And I like the way that they did it, kind of old school with the VHS type 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 tape style. Um, looks really cool so yeah i'm looking forward to that um <laughs> and in some really good news <laughs> ign has purchased eurogamer vg247 yeah. rock paper shotgun uh something called gi i don't know what what well, that is, it's kind of gaming the... former i think it's gaming former. uh gaming former yeah um and there's already and there's been loads of layoffs because of it um i don't know what's going on because ign i think a fucking pile of shit now and you know i i I used to follow them religiously like back in the day probably going about 15 years or so actually now um i they, they for me they they used to be kind of the one of the more more respected gaming review sites. Now I just think they're yeah. a fucking joke. Uh, I wouldn't touch them with a ten foot barge pole now, and it's just a shame just how far they've fallen. To be honest, um, and it's just a shame that they've taken out a load of um, websites with them now. It's just you know. Did, did, did you hear about Kotaku a couple of months ago as well? What's that? They've had a load of layoffs, haven't they? Well, they a company bought them out, uh, similar to that, but not like a ITM, but just a company. And he tried. They tried to get all their um, journalists, you know, with the quotation marks, to write about video games and right. talk and do like reviews and game guides and things like that. Right. So that so all the crazy left people that just wanted to talk about politics. Loads of them just left. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of good. So, yeah, all Kotaku are doing now is just, like, video, like, walkthroughs and game guides and things like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you but, remember the good old days of game FAQs? Those yeah. were the days, mate. Game facts. Oh, I used to love that. Oh, I, prefer... I still use it for release dates. It's, it's a good one to look at for upcoming game releases. Yeah. Uh, so Gavin's just from, t- said to me that there's a trailer out for a new Warhammer Space Marines. Is this Space Marines 2? Yeah, it's the sort of PvE, PvP co-op sort of PvE stuff. PvE trailer. Graphics look good. I mean, it's made by Saber Interactive, the, the company that made... Um, Oh, the zombie game. Free plug cart mode. Oh. oh, I remember playing the first Space Marine and really enjoying it on the 360, I think it was on. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, apparently those games are pretty decent. And um, I know someone who plays a lot of them, but it's just... I, I don't know why they just never get marketed properly. You just never know they're coming out. And I... I don't know why. Maybe they think because the toys, you know, I say, you know, the models and all that are popular, that it'll just sell itself. And I don't know. I think it's only the people who play that 
will buy these and play these games. So not many of the masses, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. I, it kind of remind like that trailer reminds me a lot of Gears, Ge- War. Gears of War. Yeah, it, don't, it really yeah. does. Well, the first one was very <laughs> Gears of War. Yeah. Like back on the 360. Yeah. There was another bit of news. That I, mate, you're really smashing that controller. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to find. There was another bit. Oh, I, don't, I thought I'd copied and pasted it into my fucking notepad. Um, there was one bit of news where game developers, and I need to find it, oh, I'm sorry, have come out and said that they're now having, like a lot of dev- developers are having second thoughts about even releasing their games on Xbox now because it's changed player behaviours on the platform. So they're finding that because of Game Pass... Oh, you mean the thing I warned everyone about like yeah. ages ago? Yeah, here we go. They don't pay for games anymore. Yeah, apparently it's... Yeah, so it says it's caused a behavioural shift that has led to very few sales on Xbox. Um, So so basically, here's a little quote. Um, One such developer released an award-winning title on Xbox more than two years ago after initially releasing on other platforms. They mentioned that their game sales on Xbox have been the weakest. My connection, David. to, to quote, they said, it's a bit like trying to sell a DVD to someone who uses Netflix. Sure, people still do that from time to time, but you're not targeting the right audience. Um, so, yeah, so this is what obviously Darren was warning about a long time ago. And I, and, I, and, I, and I do feel that because, you know, you have conversations with your friends and stuff and you're like, well, I'm not going to bother buying that game because I'll wait until it comes on Game Pass. And I think that's kind exactly. of it, yeah. it's kind of echoed around gamers in general on Xbox now. So you can't blame the people for doing it though, can you? No, hundred no. percent. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm the same. I'm the same as you. It's like, oh, I'll go to the cinema and watch that. Oh, should we watch that? No, I will wait for it to come out on stream. And yeah, it's no one's fault, is it? No. The same as like the, the movies, especially now, like. They're on streaming within some of them within a month, like that newest one we we did actually go and see with um what was it the four guy with um Ryan Reynolds. Two and, weeks um, that took to come out. Yeah, of two streaming. three weeks. Oh, so Ryan hell, Reynolds or, no Ryan Gosling, yeah. yeah, the other Ryan. Yeah, it's like two two and a bit weeks. Yeah. And it was, used uh, to like, take a what? year for it for them to hit like VHS or DVD. And then another year to get <laughs> onto Sky. Yeah. And then a year after that, if not longer, to be on you know, terrestrial TV. So it's not, it's the same with this, mate. It's not, it's, you can't really blame the people, can they? No. It's people's, you know, I mean, I've done it before. I've looked at that and thought, I'm not buying that. That's got Game Pass written all over. Yeah, 100%. It. And, you know, Xbox are happy. But you can't blame them if they're making money. No, but people no. seem to forget as well. And I have, I keep on, I feel like I'm, I'm on repeat here. You know, <laughs> people, I mean, I, you know, I'm talking for myself, but, you know, also from talking to other people, um, people have less disposable income now as well. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people are thinking, they, they, well, a lot of people want value for money, right? So if you buy an Xbox and you get Game Pass and you think, well, that's all I'm going to pay. I've got, I'm paying out my 14 quid a month or whatever. That's it. You know, I don't want to be, I don't have enough disposable income to shell out 70 quid for a game. It's a lot of money. Right, um, yeah. for most people with families, you know, you're paying rent, mortgage, whatever, and all your other bills, and that you know, there's only so much left extra. And most people don't have a spare 70 quid for a fucking video game every month or whatever, yeah. So, I, I can see why people do that 100%. And, and, and it's the same with PlayStation. Don't just be blaming Xbox because I, you know, I know a lot of people that only have PS5, but they very rarely buy games because they play a lot of the PlayStation Plus stuff. So, you know, it's not just Xbox, but obviously because Xbox are the more have more games available and it's been going longer and it's more popular, you know, people tend to blame Xbox. But, you know, don't discount PlayStation in that regard, even though it is kind of seen as the more premium platform now i'd say it's kind of the apple of the console world isn't it yeah i mean netflix had yeah. exactly the same thing i've been watching some like 
YouTube documentaries because obviously that's how bored I am at work. Yeah. About Netflix. And, you know, a lot of, you know, studios and stuff like that would refuse to put their stuff on Netflix streaming services. Yeah. Like, I think Warner Brothers were one quite for a long time would refuse to put any of their movies on. Disney, I don't think, have ever put anything on Netflix. They, they I know, I know they've got the Disney Plus Star Wars now, stuff. Yeah, not, not on other here, platforms. But I know what you mean, but I'm just saying it, the Netflix got because it was the first one and probably still the most successful streaming thing about, you know. And yeah, they got so much grief from other companies saying that they're killing movies and stuff. And the same thing here, stuff repeat itself, mate. We knew it was happening when they were, you know, on the way to all digital. Yeah, but the problem is now. I mean, it was great if you go back. Fucking hell, 10 plus, 10, 15 years now when Netflix first came out and it was the only streaming service, it, it was great because, yeah. you know, that's all you paid out. But, you know, if you want to go the legal route, um, you know, you got Paramount Plus, Netflix, Disney, fucking Amazon, Amazon. Prime, Discovery, what else have we got? All, all these things, right? And it's just the, the, the market is oversaturated. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't really happened in the music world, because obviously Spot Spotify is the most popular, but then you got the Apple Music. I don't really think there's anything else, is there? There's oh, there, there is one more, isn't YouTube, there? YouTube, I suppose, is oh, YouTube Amazon Music, music. Yeah. streaming thing. Oh, Tidal, got it. Oh, Tidal, and that, oh yeah. So perhaps I'm wrong in that in that regard. Then I don't really listen to music, so I, I think Spotify has the most. <laughs> the Zoom. Did, did you say the Zoom? Yeah, the Zoom. Oh, one of my abandoned that. fucking uh, project. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was saying to someone the other day, um, I downloaded iTunes onto my PC the other day because I wanted to check out the podcast section because I... Because back in the day, you know, I'd, I'd always look at it because I wanted to see who was top of the charts and stuff like that and... In the UK, there isn't even a podcast section on iTunes anymore. It's all in a dedicated phone app. You can't even get it on your computer anymore. And, I'm t- and I was thinking, oh, I miss the days where you could only download a podcast on your computer, then you plug in your iPod, send it over. Oh, simpler times, man. And you, you know, and then like, because I had like a, I had one of the mini iPods, and I'll just have it in my car, and I'll just plug it in, and then you know, just it was so easy. Simpler times, reminiscing now. Ah, and all the music was better quality because it wasn't being streamed at a really low bit rate. And yeah, I'm sounding like an old man now, but 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 there we go. So yeah, um, shouting at clouds. Shouting at clouds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So that's all my news. Have you guys got anything else that I've missed? Uh, no, I think you covered stuff about a free. Well, like, oh, there's going to be a PlayStation thing next week and blah, blah, blah. The usual stuff. I don't believe any of it until we see it. There was um, the usual sort of, like, butt sniffing from fucking Neil Druckmann about their next game, which I actually hope is good for once. Yeah, but it won't be, will it? (sighs) We, We shall see. I mean, I'm hoping it's, like, reasonable, but... Apparently, like so, that's obviously a thing we'll probably be seeing, no doubt, at the PlayStation thing. Their next game, if it's The Last of Us Two remastered, I'm just gonna cry. You, oh, I'm just seeing <laughs> something here that he was looking at using AI to help make games to save costs on people. Who's that? Neil Cuckman. I mean Druckman. Oh. <laughs> oh. Actually, did you see uh, that? That reminds me that um, it's it's slightly off topic, but Microsoft have uh, revealed their new Surface machines for next year. Oh no! I, think you, I, know, where, I, know, I know where you're going. Go, go on. Oh, is this the AI got, thing? Uh, that... Yeah, they've got a Copilot built in, but they've got this thing which is called uh, is it called Recall? Yes. So what it does. Is while you're working, it no, it takes a note of what you're doing, and records your keystrokes, and takes screenshots, 
in case you can't remember what it was you were working on when you open it the next time. I'm like, I'm sorry, I am not going to tick the I agree to this button when that comes up. <laughs> not a hope. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, the problem with this is, is I, I did actually have a read into this this week, and it doesn't even block out your passwords or anything like that. So no, it's, no, it's a security no, but... nightmare. Go on. But what they're saying, what they're saying is, don't worry, though, we won't record any DRM material. So that shows very clearly where their priorities lie. Do you know what I mean? It's just, we don't give a shit. We don't give a shit about your data. Everyone else's data who might sue us, though. No, we're not going to show that because that that's a problem. And it's like, oh, do me a favor. Really? And the other and the other problem is, is this can be really misused and abused by your employer if you're working you know especially yeah. if you're working from home and 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 you work on a pc all day um they'll be recording you and if you've got an asshole of a manager they'll be going back and be like oh you sat on the same screen for two hours were you doing any work you know what i mean yeah so I, I, i'm just puzzled by who they think is gonna go yes that's a wonderful idea i'd love to sign up for this i'd love to be monitored and everything i do absolutely ridiculous it really is it's just crazy oh don't worry though we won't use the data against you and it's all stored securely until it isn't you know you, you hear of breaches all the time yeah. it's just well not necessarily just that if they say all the data is stored somewhere then someone's going to be like oh challenge accepted well, the, well they say yeah, it's all exactly. stored lo- locally right that's going to use a lot of your hard drive to be storing all that all those pictures and then that's that is still a hacker's wet dream because they'll know that every pc has a folder somewhere storing all these images and they'll just try and hack in and grab all that in, in, information it will have password screenshots of all your banking the in, info and everything it's ridiculous oh, i just don't know what microsoft are doing on any level at the moment i really uh. don't Fucking hell, the sooner... It makes me sad. The, the, I mean, the, the only reason I've got a Windows PC is for gaming, and the sooner that fucking Linux or Steam sort it out and bring out another fucking platform that I can play all my games on and moving over, you know, straight away. Yeah, quite. So, okay. Yeah, sorry, go, 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 going off on a tangent slightly, but that made me laugh in a way. Ah, oh, it's redonk. It's absolutely redonk. All right, well, let's get into some games that we well, played then, news. guys. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, news. go on, Nick. Yeah. Go on, mate. Uh, the Tomb Raider, they've announced this week, the Tomb Raider remasters are getting um, physical releases now. Oh, really? Oh, uh, nice. Uh, it's, like, so they're right, I think it's September, but more than what we were talking about earlier, like, but no one is selling an Xbox. They're not doing an Xbox version. Oh, PS4, that's because PS4. no one buys it and anything on Xbox. So, well, this is the other thing. Yeah, sorry, I'm just going back to something briefly. Like, obviously, Xbox were like, oh, yeah, we're never doing away with the physical games and all that kind of stuff. We still believe in physical games. And then it was like, oh, here's a Hi-Fi Rush. There was no physical copy for that. You have, we've got to wait for a limited run to do one at some point soon, I think. And I think as far as I'm aware... I'm sure I heard that Hellblade 2 doesn't have a physical copy either. No. But yeah, like I said, um, you can or pre-order the American version of X- the Tomb Raider on Xbox, but that's, like I said, that's a limited run. That's a completely different thing as well. Yeah. And obviously that's from the States, so you'll have loads of um, import tax and things like that. And obviously that takes so long for it to come out, but... I mean, I've been playing that a little bit, and it's okay. I mean, I did say, I mean, it's a, probably about a month or so old, Webby, but it's had some um, patches where they've removed some of the, what they would say, they call them offensive images and oh, things like that. For fuck's sake, Which yeah. was, you know, um... Was this the poster? <laughs> Is this the posters in, a, in, yeah. the, in the locker room yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah absolutely. basically... Yeah. You know, uh, guys, you know you used to get, like, the PS1 ma- and the magazines. They'd do, like, Lara Croft on the cover. Uh, basically, they took a couple of those, and mm-hmm. there's some from um, 
because she got they put her in FHM magazine. So they put yeah. the she was on Playboy as well, wasn't she? Yeah. I, I don't know if she was on Playboy like properly. I don't know if they did pixelated boobies on Playboy. Maybe I'm not sure. But um, but yeah. So they put some of these posters as like you know little Easter eggs in like the locker rooms if if one of the levels. And obviously someone complained, so they were told to patch that out. And also one of the characters from Tomb Raider one, I want to say um Pierce, he had a picture of um and a well, she wasn't even naked. I think she was wearing like a it's like a bikini spacesuit on the back of his brown leather jacket. And um yeah, they've okay. patched all that out. And that was in the original, but you couldn't obviously see because the graphics weren't you know, and the text as well. So they've patched that out as well. And I just think, oh, God, why are they spending probably thousands of pounds to patch this stuff out? Because one bellend has complained to them on Twitter. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's silly, isn't it? Yeah. I don't, I just, I mean, I know we've gone off on this a lot, but it's like... Well, we say bellends, <laughs> usually those bellends are like journalists. Well, exactly, I know that, but it's like... <laughs> Oh, just say it. Well, I'm sorry you didn't enjoy that part, you know. We tried to put bits in for everything. Don't even say sorry, just say, fuck off then. Well, just yeah. just do what all these other pe- people do. Just say, well, well, if you don't like it, don't watch it and go outside yeah. and touch grass. And then they're surprised when no one fucking watches their show. Yeah. And also the games are only uh, Tomb Raider. They're 30 quid physical as well, which is good because they were 25 digital and 30 physical which is kind of how it should be it should be cheaper digitally yeah. and stuff like that so obviously yeah. they'll go probably to 20 quid pretty quickly which i'll get a maybe because i want you know i bought it physically uh digitally because it was cheap yeah and i like this and i want them well i know it's not square enix but i want other companies to start doing this yeah. like you know like a resident evil one two three on one sort of thing for modern consoles, you know. So I support things like that if it's a good price and a good idea. So I will pick that up towards Christmas. So that's good. But yeah. I don't know. What can you do? They're just batching stuff out of games. But Well, in, in other news, there was a, an update this week for Stellar Blade that added in a game mode and I think the unlockable outfits for that game mode are alternate versions of the unpatched censored outfits. Nice. So they've got so the they... censored outfits back? Yeah, so the censored outfits are back in the game. You just have well, to... Why can't they just put a setting in the game? It's like, you know, put in a male or female and if you, you know, they get... If they put other... Just patch everything out. <laughs> just, just have that one question. Are you male, female, or other? If they click other, done. She's wearing a Or person. just have a thing. Like, you know when you play um, games and you have, like, do you want blood on or off? Yeah. You just have that it's as well. Really do you want, yeah. like, yeah, turn turn other things. Just give yeah. people options to turn them off. Plus, it's just strange the costumes <laughs> that they have patched. Comp- and some of them, I mean... I mean, Webby's got some of them on uh, his Twitch channel, and you're like, damn, how'd they get away with that? I mean, <laughs> I used to like get off to Tomb Raider and a triangle boobs back in 96, and this one, you're like... Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, I don't know. It's nice, but there's another one that um, I do want to buy this game, even though some people get mad and hate it, but it's just 70 quid, man. I can't... I can't no. be paying 70 quid for games, especially, like, the amount of games I've collected over the years. Plus, just, I look at some of, like, the PS1 and the PS2 games when they were brand new, and they're, like, 30 quid. Yeah. You know, the most expensive ones would be 40. And that, That's you know, not true, actually. That's because F1, F1 on PS1, I saved a photo of it, came out at 50 quid. Wow. But what? The, but there was a and lot back in the day, you know, between shop to shop. Because I used to go to EB yeah. and then game, and those would be fifty quid. But then if I went to my like a local indie shop, which is where I used to go to get most, was called One yeah. Step Beyond, 
they'd be 10, 15 yeah. pounds cheaper. So I, and we yeah. always had a thing in the UK, didn't we, Graham, with RRP? That was kind of a... I still don't yeah. know what it is now, but wasn't like RRP illegal in the UK for a long time? Or something like that? It, 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 was, it, it, it was a bit of a... It was, yeah, it was a bit like of a, a grey area. A because illegal thing, and that was a bit yeah. difficult for them to set, like, you know, compared to America. But yeah, because in theory, RRP yeah. means you can make him an offer, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it's just so, the recommended price. It's not the yeah. suggested price. Well, yeah, but like I said, if, you know, but back then, you know, like EB and Game, they, I mean, like Game yeah. for years, they'd be 10, 15 pounds more than Tesco. I mean, Tesco's used to sell the yeah. 50 quid Call of Duty games for 20, 25, didn't they, Webby? Remember yeah, they used to queue up, like, yeah. the midnight queue up to get them. So how the hell did they, how were they allowed to sell them at that price? Compared to what these, you know, obviously they're making a profit. Yeah even selling them at that price, so, you know, I don't know. I think yeah. I'm up on the one again. Yeah. <laughs> Any other news? Also, we're moving to games we played. Other than, well, it's more of the, the new Mario game that came out this week, the, you know, the Paper Mario thing. Paper Mario, Mario, yeah. Remaster, Remaster. sort of thing. Uh, it's okay. They've had a few issues. Like I said, I think, um, a few people are upset because it runs at 30 frames per second and the GameCube one ran at 60. 60. And there's a few, like, I reckon during normal gameplay and walking around is fine. But some of the, um, like, the in, you know, in battle combat things, they're like quick time events. Like, you've got to press the button really quickly to do, like, a perfect or attack or something. Right. But obviously, because yeah. they've reduced the frames, you've, they've actually like reduced how much time you have to do it and things like that so they've made it a bit awkward and also yeah. um a lot of companies including nintendo have cancelled loads of physical pre-orders for the oh, game really? because apparently like you know the last one that came out before christmas the super mario rpg yeah. remake remaster unlike normal nintendo games you that's on sale and a lot of places for like 25 30 quid Right. Because they printed a lot more than they wanted to. And you know what Nintendo were like for keeping their games, like, inflated prices? Yeah. By not having many copies available and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So they reckon they deliberately cancelled a load of them. Just so they couldn't, you know, they didn't have surplus so they could sell them for 30 quid. Yeah. Which is kind of shitty, really. I've seen... I mean, um... I mean, I've seen some people online that they pre-ordered this, like, eight months ago. Uh, I think Nintendo took the money on the day, and then they cancelled the order, like, four or five days before it was due to come out. And those people still haven't had refunds as well. Wow. They didn't give an automatic refund as well. Because a lot of these people, oh, it will take up to five working days to process your refund, and then... Another ten working days to put it back into your account and stuff like that. I just thought it's just really shady. Some of these things. I know they all do it's stuff, right. but Nintendo is just. There's no need to do that, is there? Yeah. Well, I've seen a lot of rage online because apparently one of the characters is trans in it as well, and the game's aimed yeah, at kids. I don't, yeah. was, I don't know if that was in the original or they deliberately changed it. Oh, no, I no, think they've changed, was, they've changed it parts was, of the translation translation to make yeah. it more apparent that that's what it is, yeah. rather than yeah. like a light skirting of the issue. Because there's a lot of Japanese media that actually has characters like femboys and all that kind of stuff and things in it, but then like literally, you know, what the West like, there's like, oh no, they're just this, they're just that and they'll just slap it on there rather than they'll just remove all the nuance and they'll just like stamp it with yeah. what they believe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I know we, you know, we go off into one because we're getting a lot of the woke stuff forced on us. But like you said, 10, 20 years ago, we'd have had any of that stuff from Japanese game removed from us and we wouldn't even know it was done, would we? Yeah. So that, that you know, right. what we're getting now, we had the opposite years ago. Indeed. Yeah. Any other news? news? I think that's all the news. <laughs> no? 
right. Yeah. Well, I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? Okay. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's get into some of the games we've played then. So I'll start us off. Um, Go for it. Yeah, so I've gone to the beta. This is a game that Darren's actually played in a beta beforehand as well. Uh, it's a game called um, The First Descendant. You played this before, didn't you? But yeah. not that much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the beta was out, oh, fucking ages ago, wasn't it? Like, the first one. Yeah, um, last last year. Yeah, it was ages ago, because I, I, I had a message about it, saying, oh, have you uh, played it? And I'm thinking, do I remember this? Like I was like, I, was, I installed it on my PC, and it said I had about 48 minutes of gameplay, and then as soon as I put it on... I was like, oh, yes, I remember this. So I played about an hour or so of it today um, on both my PC and my Steam Deck. And I'm pleasantly, well, I'm pleased to say that it runs really well on the Steam Deck. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah because it's going to be, because when it eventually comes out, it's going to be a free-to-play title. And it's kind of like a mixture of between, like, Warframe... Um, and just sort of like a just a, um, a third person shooter, really. Um, where it's basically you go into this hub world and then you've got a map and you go to these different zones and you do these missions. So it's not just one open world area, it's multiple kind of zones. And then you go to the zone and then there's missions to do. And then, it, and then if there's other people doing that mission, it pushes you into the mission with them. So I quite like that because it gives you obviously that carp experience without having to hang around and wait in lobbies and stuff like that. Um, and then, then obviously if no one else is doing that mission, then you're on your own. But gra graphically, it's really nice. Um, it's very fast and fluid on the controls. And, you know, it's nice to get a game that's a third person shooter instead of a first person shooter because... I don't know, recently that just doesn't seem to have been a lot that I can think of off memory. That's like a fast and fluid third-person shooter. Um, you know, so basically you get your characters, and it's very much a looter shooter. So you carry, so, so as you're playing, you pick up better guns, and you got, um, you know, you, you got three slots. So I've had like a machine gun or an Uzi and a sniper rifle and a pistol, or you like a special weapon. And then you have like powers, um, was like a, a freeze power, you can freeze your enemies in place. Um, that seemed to be a popular one. And there's one where it like freezes the area around you. And I think it just depends on the character you play as, as to what special powers you get. So I only played as the one, one of the characters. So you get a choice of three different ones when you start the game. A couple of dudes and one lady. So um so so there's that and um yeah as i say it's very good looking the, the the characters look decent as well um and it's just got it just seems to have quite a fun gameplay loop i think so um it'd be interesting to see what what it's like when it comes out and how or as i say how aggressive the microtransactions are on the game when it actually comes out <laughs> Because obviously it's a free to play title, so they're gonna be there, guys. Obviously, but as, as I say, just interesting to see how hard they push them. You know, mm. it'd be interesting to play it after the beta because I had a few issues with it last year when it came out. As in, one of the main ones was ammo. Right. You ran out of ammo constantly in it. Right. Okay. And I think that was a lot of people's big sort of like one of their problems. So I've I've heard it's been addressed anyway. Yeah, I was just trying to think this because it's published by a company called Nexon, and I was just trying to think. Nexon, yeah. Um, and they actually pushed out Dave the Diver of all games. Um, uh. so that's quite interesting. So. Yeah, I can't really see anything else on Steam that they've pushed out, but. Um, yeah, it's a really fun game though. To be fair, and it's just it's just cool, cool. It was good. It's good to play. It's the beat is only going on over the weekend, and it's on PC only. Um, so it finishes at midnight tonight. So by the time you listen to this, guys, I'm sorry, the beta will be over. 
But um, I'm not actually sure on a release date on this either, to be honest. But um... it's supposed to be summer this year. Oh, really? So this is the final final test. I think they're going to try ramping it up and fondle as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. It still says summer. Um, yeah, there's no actual proper release date still, which is really weird. Yeah, but no, it's good fun. It is a good fun game, so. Oh. Yep, that's me done. Um, who was next? Graham. Yes. So I've played a couple of new games this week. Uh, I'll talk about the first one. Uh, this was a game um, that came out on the previous generation. It's called Ziggurat. And there is a follow-up for Ziggurat 2. Now, what this is, is it's an indie game... But it's a it's an FPS magic based FPS roguelite. So if you like any of those games where you have sort of um, sort of many runs and save your power ups and buy persistent upgrades, this is the game for you. It feels at times it it's kind of um, it's kind of very slightly stylized and very sort of cartoony looking. Uh, but it's one of those where it generates the levels procedurally. Right. So every time you play it, the layout is different. So what you need to do, generally speaking, is there'll be kind of one to sort of three or four floors. And what you need to find is you need to find... Um, it, it's the key for the boss room. You have to defeat the boss to progress to the next level of the map. Now, this is, you know, this is placed randomly. And also you'll get, um, there are three fragments of a key. So the idea is, is you're looking for the fragments of the key. And these will give you access to a special room where you can get some sort of upgrade or some sort of additional weapon. It's not essential. For example, you could wander into the first room, find the boss key, walk into the next room, and you can take the boss on straight away if you want to. Right. Now, the downside the downside to that is you're not going to amass a lot of experience and you're not going to power up much. So it's kind of a little bit of a push and pull. Do you want to speed through it? Do you want to kind of farm the level as much as you can to get your experience? The more you use weapons, and the, I mean, the deal is once you go into a room, the doors are closed. And if it's a combat room, you have to kill all the bad guys before you can move on to the next room. But every time you clear a room, you get you get granted access to choose a perk. Wow. So the more rooms you do, the, the more perks you can stack. But I, I, I think this game, um, I, I really like it. It's really good. It's all projectile weapons. And the only way I can describe it is it feels a little bit like Diablo in first person if you were just firing projectiles, right. sort of. I mean, so uh, it's picking up power. So the movement yeah, sorry, watching on. the video looks very quick like Quake or a Doom. It's very, very fluid, and you have a dash move. Um, and you do get things like um, environmental traps. You'll have, like, um, lava pits sort of acid pools uh, occasionally you'll get rooms which will have things like spikes which shoot up from the floor and you sort of have to kind of be watching where you're going most of the time and a lot of the levels are very very kind of vertical they're built sort of on levels for example you'll go into a room and you'll have a mini map in the corner and it will show that there are four exits and you might only see two of the room or something like that you know so it's sort of one of those where you're encouraged to um sort of explore to kind of maximize your loot and then what happens is however well you do on the run you get granted um these i think they're called insight points which allow you to buy upgrades which kind of apply to any character because there are multiple characters to unlock and they all have uh, special abilities uh, and you can power up you can um, say this character gets more experience 
from uh, picking up, you know, like the um, the sort of experience points from combat or this character has an additional 5% health at the start. And you can respect them, but it's kind of tiered. And you can save up your points and buy upgrades. And you can just... So every time you play it, your character is slightly stronger for the next run. But, I mean, this this game is a tiny download. I think it's like it's like a 1.1 gig download on PS5. Wow. But, um, I mean, visually, it's awesome. The music is great. And the gameplay, with a lot of these games, where they're trying to mix a roguelike and an FPS, they tend to nail sort of one half of that equation. And in this game, both parts feel as if they're actually sort of quite good. Because quite often I find that there are a couple of very similar ones which kind of had the same sort of idea. There were a couple of games where it was an FPS, but it was roguelike. And it just felt like the sort of FPS part of it just felt a bit weedy and it just felt a bit crap and slow. But this is sort of, it's quite playable, but you have to sort of kind of choose your upgrades quite wisely as well. Oh, right. But it's definitely worth a look. And uh, I believe the first game... Um, back on PS4, the, the Ziggurat one was actually recommended to me by uh, was it uh, by Galford, oh, John? I'm sure. Because the th- this company they're called Milkstone are actually based in Spain. They're in Madrid, right? And I ended up having a conversation with him because I'd seen the game, and he said, "Oh, he says you've got to buy it." He said, "I've got this game because." They're sort of local to where he lives in the world. Yeah. But no, I really like this game. It's definitely worth a look. And it's like sort of at the minute on PlayStation, I think it's like £17 or something like that. So you're playing on the PlayStation, but are you? I'm playing it on PS5, and this is it's it's absolutely worth a look. I mean, it is strictly a single-player game. There is no co-op. The only downside to games like this is quite often you'll walk into a room after a while, and you'll go because the rooms are sort of semi randomized, you'll walk in and you'll go, Oh, I know this room. So sometimes, after a while, you kind of get a little bit of familiarity, and there is that slight bit of repetition. And I found this with the bosses as well because they tend to run the bosses in a certain order. Yeah, quite often, if you do a side mission you will see the first one multiple times, which gets a little bit sort of um, a little bit boring, but they do mix it up, I think, the further you get into the game. Oh, interesting. That looks good, mate. You, you've been playing a lot of these fast FPS retro-style games, haven't you? So it's obviously your jam at the minute. Well, I, I'm quite into the roguelike games. Yeah. Okay. I've I've got quite I've got I've got quite a list of them on my on my account. Some of them I can guarantee that you've probably never heard of. Probably. <laughs> I mean, it, it's the kind of thing if you're into roguelites and you like FPS games, yeah. then this is de- definitely worth a look. And that sort of that is my gaming jam. I think really. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But awesome, I'm liking mate. it. Yeah, definitely worth, worth checking out. Cool. Um, okay, so we'll switch over to Nick now then. Yeah, so, so I haven't played much because I've been busy. I've played lots of one game, little ones. But the main one I've been playing last year is um, Mad Max. Oh, yeah, that's been getting quite yeah, a lot excellent. of a bit of um, media attention recently for some Yeah, I think it's because the new movie's out or coming. I think it's such a good game. game. So, yeah, it, it is and it isn't. It, 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 it was almost a brilliant game, but it's just a good game. There's just a few things with it, you know, it's annoyed me. One is like, obviously, I know I suppose the apocalyptic and that, but it's basically like Grand Theft Auto Mad Max. That's pretty much what they've done. <laughs> and um, the few things, there's no radio or anything like that. So I understand right. that, you know, we could have had some bloke playing music or something. You know, just something, because you spend a lot of time driving about in the car, and it, you just hear the engine and stuff, so not much happened. I mean, that's not the end of the world. You could listen to Spotify at the same time. That's just a little bit. 
you know, it can get tedious. And um, but yeah, I've, I've been enjoying it. The only a few bits that normally is um, what I wanted to do because I stream a lot. Focus on the main missions and ignore all the side side quests. Okay. You yeah. Can't do, and all the side crap, you know, not just the side missions, but like the collectibles and the, you know, like the Ubisoft stuff where there's just loads of stuff over the map. And basically, the problem is you've got to do that. Oh really? You, you've well, you've really, really underpowered from what oh. I've seen. A lot of people said like. Like, say, if I've up, you upgrade your car, you upgrade max. I mean, like I said, like, to make him punch, it's like 10% more damage, 20% more damage, 30, 40, and 50. So it all add on. And it's basically, you're getting into fights, and you can get surrounded by 20, 30 enemies. Wow. And like I said, it's kind of like Batman, where, you know, you press, you know, dodge and stuff like that, or block. But you've got, a, but it doesn't flow as well as that. And camera does that circle and thing, and it can a lot of times it will circle you like behind something, or in a mountain if you're there. And there's you know there's not a lot of time to get that. Like sometimes it will do, but it'll put the yellow you know the triangle or Y, but it puts it above the enemy's head, not above yours. Oh like right, Spider Man. So if he's like off the screen, you don't know he's coming for you, you know. And similar to what, um, what you were saying, Graham, with um, Spider Man, when you were talking about that, they've also yeah. got unblockable attacks. So instead of yeah. getting press that, you then have to press R one to do like a roll out the way. So yeah. you're surrounded by thirty enemies, you roll out the way, and someone will just kick you in the throat and kill you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And it's just like, ah. Oh. And it's a lot better now because I've probably spent 10, 15 hours just going around doing all this stuff, collecting all these, you know, all this loot and stuff to make him bigger and doing some a lot of like the side missions and side quests, little stuff. You know, so now I've pretty much upgraded Max completely and the car is pretty powerful. But before then, it's like I'd have to hit them 20 times each. Sometimes it felt like it. You know, whereas they could hit me three times and I'm dead. So whereas now I've leveled up as, you know, as pretty much as much as I can. So now they could probably hit me seven or eight times. So, you know, they take, you know, half as much damage. But, I mean, that's, I don't know if people... Some people just want to do that and don't like, you know, if people like all the side stuff, you know, there's a lot to do. Plus, this game keeps coming on offer for, like, three quid, so it's worth it. But then, if you're one of the remaining Chivo hunters, that's going to piss you off. Because there's a lot of threes, fives, sevens, and eights achievement oh, points. Buddy. Well, peeps won't like lot. it then. I know a lot of people hated that. That doesn't bother me as much now because like i said i got up to a hundred odd thousand and i just didn't care anymore and i've never you know trophies there's not numbers so it might be better on ps4 than xbox but let's say i'm enjoying it so far and i'm only up to um i'm now started act four of five okay. but i don't so you're getting towards the end hopefully yeah but i don't well i hope so well i'd like to think so but i have i don't think i've actually done much story right okay you know, it's just like you go to a certain area, you go to like the hideout, you liberate the hideout, and then you do things like you collect stuff for each hideout. Like, oh, come and collect these pieces of scrap. So when you go to that hideout, it fills your car up with fuel, or it fills your health up, yeah, or it fills yeah. your water up, and things like that. And for each one of these areas, you know, like towers or whatever you want to call it, I don't know if that's the right word for it, tower. You know, there's like it's again. So there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lists of things to collect for each area. And there's probably was there one, two, three, four, five areas throughout the map. You know, and like I said, there's just so much stuff to do in the game, which is good if you like that. And I'm enjoying it. I just like I said, I I would prefer to just beeline the main story. And I got to the last area, 
went without doing any of the side stuff, but I was just getting destroyed constantly, so I don't know. Still s- still enjoying it. Nice, nice. mate. Nice. Yep. Cool. Uh, Darren, then? Uh, I'll talk about Sandland again, briefly. Sure. Talked about it last week. Still really enjoying the game. Um, probably about two-thirds of the way through it now. I suppose, maybe. Still haven't obviously advanced to another part of it. Um, I'm just sort of like mopping up stuff in the uh, the, the first sort of zone. But yeah, like I said last week, Nick, the, the demo was like a pretty poor representation of the game because when you actually play the game, you get slowly introduced to every aspect of it as you play through rather than it all being dumped in front of you and you're not actually told what to do or what does what. So, I mean, that's, that seems the type of game that will be 20 quid really quickly. Uh, reckon? Maybe, I don't know. Well, generally a lot of those games, even the Dragon Ball games, the Bandai Namco games go cheap. Yeah, like I said before last last week as well, the presentation on it's fantastic. Um, there was apparently a TV show of it done that was, I think, staggered away on like Hulu or Disney Plus. Okay. Or something, which is, it's almost similarly done like the game is, where it's kind of got that 2D overlay to a 3D game, yeah. personally. I think the show is 3D, but with like a 2D looking overlay to it. So that'd be interesting. But yeah, like, so the, the characters are all really interesting and good, with like good character development, and the storyline seems really well done so far. It's a lot darker in places than I was expecting it to be. Um, and it obviously has those those cool, really over-the-top sort of Toriyama kind of designs. Not quite as bad as, uh, obviously, like One Piece. Like, that. that's about as out there as you can get for character designs and stuff. But there's definitely a lot of um, Dragon Ball-esque influence. In it, we shall say. Yeah, you go around the big open world on foot or in, like, tanks or, like, mech things that you can build. You can find new pieces for them, craft them in the workshop and stuff. Go around hunting the enemies for the different materials you'll, you'll need. Oh, all this sort of stuff you'd really expect. Like I say, if, if you see it, like for a decent price, uh, I'd say it's well worth picking up, and it's perfect if you've yeah. got like younger younger people as well. Like it's it's not super violent or over the top in any sort of way of that. I mean, even though you're going around in a tank blowing shit up and hammering things with a Gatling gun, no one actually dies. You kind of just knock them unconscious. I guess you're using rubber bullets. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But enemies sort of just groan and fall over. Uh, nice. cool. mm. Short and sweet on that one. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, is it back to me again? Indeedly do. Yeah, I played another <coughs> beta this week. Um Ooh. I want to say, excuse me, I've got a bit of heartburn going on, I've got a bit of a blip. Um, so big thank you to Herican from our Discord community for sending me the code. It's a beta on Xbox called 33 Immortals. So it's basically, yeah, so it's basically a top-down, kind of Diablo-style game, but in a cartoony-type graphics. And you start off on your own with a tutorial and you have a character and you can choose between different weapons. So you can have like a sword or a bow and arrow or like a couple of like knife things or like a magic or, or do magic with a staff. But you basically get put into levels with 32 other people, which is why it's called 33 Immortals. 
And my experience was just sort of, you, you you jump into a map with all these people and basically there is an objective either to kill all the enemies or to collect something or kill everyone and then a boss appears or something like that. And it's just a, a different way. Oh, well, it's just a different kind of a multiplayer version of kind of those single player experiences, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just very interesting as i say the art style is really nice it kind of reminds me of what's that of hades that hades art style if you played that, yeah yeah um very angular yeah uh so, and and just the cartoony graphics and stuff um so it's kind of like a mixture between like hades and diablo i'd say but in a multiplayer setting it's just very interesting the only thing i i found was your the maps were quite big and everyone seemed to be quite spread out over uh, over the map and i just thought it would probably work better if everyone kind of stuck together and just destroyed everything as one but every the the problem is obviously everyone's on their own they're not really talking to well they're not talking to anyone and just kind of just doing their own thing in 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 a lot of ways or like only like three or four people would stick together you know um but no it's quite it's, it is it is a quite an interesting game i'm not sure if it's one of those games we're gonna have to buy or if it's gonna hit game pass or something like that but <laughs> sure, i'm quite tired today i've been busy um I don't think it's one of those games that I would pro- that I would buy, um, just just because it's not really my kind of game. But if it was ca- if it was Game Pass fodder, I'd probably give it a bosh a couple of times and then probably never play it again. But it's just quite interesting, and I think it's quite interesting that they're doing a an open well, not an open like a, a beta for it before it launches. I'm not sure on the release date i don't think it's too far away um but yeah it's it, it's quite fun but i don't think it's gonna blow anyone away or anything but i just thought it'd be interesting it's just something interesting to talk about in the podcast obviously it's another beta that's come out um and it's just quite it's quite fun but yeah i'm just trying to find a relate a release date um i can't see one com no it just says coming 2024 oh and it is coming to game pass so there we go there you go day one game pass whenever it's out later in the year so yeah so it's interesting but it's not amazing so that's my review average next (laughs) is it me yes it's you mate yeah, well, I went into town this morning. I took a couple of old PS4 games with me, and mm. I found a copy of RoboCop for 30 quid on the shelf. So mm. I traded in a couple of games, and I got RoboCop for about a tenner. Mm, and gosh. it's it's actually not bad. It's all <laughs> right. It now, one thing is, is from the, fo- from, from the footage, it's kind of... You're not quite sure because it's beh- it's it's by those people who did that Rambo game, isn't it? On the previous generation, and Terminator, Terminator Salvation. Yeah, or one of the yeah. Is it, is it is it is it they are they called Tayon or something? I think, but they don't have the best track record. But this game looks awesome. It has a few little bugs here and there. Nothing which ruined the gameplay, but this is this is really quite interesting. I think it's captured the sort of um, it captures the feel of the film films quite closely. You kind of you kind of almost feel like you're inside the movie. Uh, some of the dialogue, their faces don't quite move a hundred percent in time with the um with what's being said but it does sort of have like um sort of a semi open world mission select screen but the 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 gunplay is actually it's quite good you are 
obviously because you're RoboCop, you're not moving extra fast. You're kind of lumbering along, just mowing everyone down. But it's um, it, it's it's just good fun actually. And I and like I said, I think it looks really nice. Or I'm playing it on PS5, obviously. It looks really good. Um, and it's sort of a pretty solid game. And it's um, like I said, I sort of saw it for about thirty quid, and I thought, do you know what? I think I might give it a go. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely interesting. I think they've sort of na- they've nailed the feel of it definitely. Yeah, well, I agree with you, Graham. I, I obviously um, mentioned this ages ago. I picked this up when it came out. I've not actually finished it because I got yeah. distracted by other games. But graphically, it's absolutely phenomenal. And and as, and as you say, it gives you a really good vibe of making you feel like you're in the movies because it's all yeah. It's just. The star it stylizes exactly the same. The story's pretty much spot on. Like the way the characters interact and how Murphy's treated and all that sort of stuff. It's it's really well done. So especially for fans of the movies, I think this 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 game is pretty much a must yeah. play. To be honest, it had some really nice touches. And like you, as you were saying earlier, it's one of those games that for seventy quid, I couldn't really justify it. Yeah. But I thought if I can get it under 30 and trade a couple of games and get it for only about 10 quid, then at the end of the day, that's a deal that I suits me. I think it me. was like so a 45, 50 quid game when it came out. It wasn't was it, was quite, it not quite full price. Yeah, it wasn't quite no. full price, no. No, I think you might be right, actually. But, um, no, I mean, I, I think they've done a good job. I mean, it has a few little glitches here and there, but as Webby was saying, it's a, it's a pretty good-looking game, it really, is. as well. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, it's um, it's definitely interesting. It's um, got some good ideas in there as well. Hundred percent, hundred percent agree. Mate. Definitely uh, one of last year's pleasant surprises. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly it was that. Annoying, Graham. I don't know if that's where basically you know you've got the footsteps constantly when you're walking around. Yeah. You, footsteps you do, go. yeah. Apparently, I don't know if they patched that so you could turn that off. Post probably not, but. I don't think they have, to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't think so. Until, until someone tells you that that's annoying, you might not notice it. <laughs> I haven't semi-noticed it at this yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's um, it's it's interesting. It's it's definitely worth a look if you find it cheap anywhere. Awesome, mate. No, it's a great game. Oh, you can reduce footstep volume in the options. There you go. Oh, nice. I might apply that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, okay. it's, uh, it's good. Nice one, mate. Okay, um, Nick then, mate. Yeah, so other than Mad Max and Forza, I've been playing um, a bit of Switch and little Mario Kart 8, obviously with a girlfriend and stuff, and we played a bit of that today. I mean, it's Mario Kart. It's yeah. Seven. It's what seven, eight years old, and it's even older because it's technically the Wii U version. Yeah, it as well, is, isn't it? And, um, you know, look at that. I think long time, haven't they? Just before Christmas, I want to say that the, the last of the, um, you know, those extra map packs came out. Oh yeah. Which is nice because you know a lot of other companies they would have just released another version of or another game. Yeah, but the problem with the Switch is it's so underpowered. If they released a new yeah. Mario Kart, it would look exactly the same. I know. Plus, I I wouldn't surprise me if, you know, they made more money just by releasing this as like a £16 or whatever it was, you know, yeah. DLC. Plus, I think if you get the um, the Switch Plus expansion, you get the, that with it for nothing. Or you know, yeah, as part as of it, yeah. yeah. But I just, I think I just paid. For, I think it was like, it's something like eighteen quid. I think I bought it off a CD keys for like fifteen. Yeah. When it came out, and they staggered them over a couple of years, and that's quite good. What I do like is when um, it tells you when it comes up. They're not hot, trying to hide anything. That when it comes up, it tells you in the corner. Oh, this came. This map. You know, this uh, track was originally on the SNES or the NES or the GameCube. Yeah. So, oh, and there's like, yeah. a few of them. I was like, oh, that one was on GameCube. Because I think the the two main Mario Kart games I've played properly was um, 
Double Dash on GameCube and the Super Circuit on Game Boy Advance. Yeah. When I see when I was yeah. on the Game Boy Advance, and obviously the graphics are, you know, updated for this type of thing, but I was, I'm just remembering, oh, I remember that bit, you know, on the, you know it's just the nostalgia and things like that. Yeah. So we played that, and we're playing, um, I'll just go through these pretty quickly because it's just switch. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah. It's... It's it's Mario Tennis and it yeah. you know it's you just play that two player that's it just plays like yeah. all the tennis games really you know you get all different characters and stuff and you build up your special and you do a special hit it's fine but the one we've been playing today which we're kind of looking forward to and it's a bit annoying is we try to play it's two player I don't know if you had done this Webby the was it New Super Mario U Deluxe yeah so basically it's, it. it yeah. It's good. Yeah, it is and it is. It's isn't. hard. It is hard. Like, yeah. When there's four of you, yeah. Yeah, well, it's hard when there's just two of you. And yeah. it reminds me of um, <laughs> the same problem we had, or I had back in the early mid 90s with Sonic 2, whereas if one of the ca- you know characters is off screen, he's gone. Yeah. And the person can't see. The, the game does try, it zooms out a little bit. So you can see if, um, you know, you can see your character, but it only goes so far. So you've kind of got to hold hands as you play the game. If uh, But then also, if you do that, you sort of get in each other's way, because it's like, oh, I'll jump on. Oh, no, you've jumped on the thing. Oh, I'll get that. Oh, you've got my mushroom. Give it back, bitch. You know, things like that. Yeah. Plus, um, <laughs> and she was playing, I want to say, is, was it, is it Toadette, one of the pink toads? Oh, yeah. And that that couldn't jump high enough to do some of the bits in the game. All right. Because obviously Mario and Luigi can do the old double jump and things like that, unless there's another button somewhere we didn't know. But to try to do some jumps, and and her character's a lot shorter and chubbier, and I'm jumping up there with Luigi, and she just couldn't couldn't jump up there. So she was dying a lot, and that wasn't really her fault. And that's like user error to me, mate. Hmm? Sounds like user error to me. Possibly, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm not going to get in trouble. But I just thought that's, that'd be a fun game <laughs> to play. But I don't know if... The... It's just weird. It's like those 2D Mario... I mean, I've never beat a 2D Mario game ever. OMG. Myself, because I kind of suck at those. I mean, I've done like, like, all the 2D Sonics and some of, you know, Streets of Red, Golden Axe and all a lot of the others. It's just Mario. It just... It always seems odd to me. It's like, no, you complete the game exactly the way we tell you to do it and get the jump perfect or you die. I mean, I've done one, but it was the 3D land, the first one on 3DS. But that was easy because if you die enough times, they give you like the gold Tanuki suit and you just basically be invincible and can't die. So I like that. But yeah, that's, you know, Switch, that's fun. But I think there's, there's, is it? They reckon they're going to announce soon the Switch 2 or whatever. Well, it's going to have to be pretty powerful, like in my opinion, to like sway people from the Steam Deck down or one of the other PC handhelds because you can emulate all the Switch stuff anyway. I mean, yeah. it's Nintendo, so it will sell. Of course it will sell. Initial, yeah. Well, unless they completely mess up like they did with the Wii U, where no one knew what it was and... And they were trying to market it to people who, you know, didn't really want it. All they've got to do is call it. I mean, I'd like them to call it the Super Switch or something like that, just for nostalgia. You know, yeah, that'd be good. It, you know, and have like some of the same logos. You know, like the Nintendo with the red thing around it. You know, like Super. Then Switch. again, they won't call it the Super Switch. Well, it, what because it's too easy and it's Nintendo, and I'll mess it up. No, think of what the abbreviation of Super Switch would be. What, the SS? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. Could, but it's just, it's so easy for them to, you know, to make a successor to a machine that's been as successful as this, you would think is just so easy. I mean, we could just write down in five minutes what you've got to do, you know. Dec- you know, a cool name, uh, obviously more powerful, I don't think it has to be as powerful as a PS5, but definitely, like, maybe PS4 Pro standards, sort of between the PS4 and the PS5. 
And I've heard it's going to be about just slightly, but yeah, more than the, the yeah. PS4 this and Xbox One. A lot of the PS4 games that could never get onto the Switch and stuff like that. And obviously they're going to re-release newer versions of everything they've ever done and put all other stuff on there. But they've got to make it backwards compatible, haven't they? Oh, it would have to be, yeah. Because um, I know it's a bit more of a news thing, but, but you know that um, the Mario game I was talking about? Yeah. The new one that's just come out, the um, paper thing. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, they've, people have... Obviously, that's leaked online, isn't it? So you could play it on your Switch. Not your Switch, your um, yeah. Steam Deck. And apparently, they've found code in that that basically that will work with a Switch too. Oh, right. Whether or not it will be... You know, like when you get Series X versions, oh, it runs better frame rates, better visuals and stuff. So they've basically found stuff in there to s- suggest that that will work or that will get a patch to work with the Switch too. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So it's kind of confirmed backwards compatibility. Yeah. Well, yeah, they should just call it the Switch 2. People know what it is. Job done. Isn't that, I don't know? think Nintendo have ever called anything the 2, have they? They need to start doing it because they're onto a winner there. It's just something so so fucking simple. Yeah, but they, they might have the Xbox mentality of, oh well, if that's the Switch Two, and out there is the PS Five, that people are going to think that the Five is better than the Two, so they're not going to bother buying the Switch because they think people are just idiots. Well, people are. I mean, well, I don't. <laughs> you know, that's why Xbox call. The 360, the Xbox Two, because they they thought if the Xbox Two goes up against the PS3, people are going to just automatically assume it's more powerful because it's got a bigger number. So, I don't know. I think this they'll they'll leave the Switch whole thing out of it. I think you reckon because it will confuse people that that was one of the issues they had with the Wii U. Yeah, but they call it the Wii U and not the Wii Two. Mm. Yeah. But I think that's the same thing. They didn't call it the Wii 2 because, you know, like I said it was going up against PS4 then, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, things like that. Mm. I know, I mean, but then we all thought the Nintendo Switch name when it came out was fucking stupid and no one thought it would sell, didn't we? Yeah, it's like the most best selling consoles of all yeah. time now, isn't it? Well, obviously, we ain't got a clue. And it has that snappy now. little logo, like, sound bite as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That little click oh, noise. I think like... a lot of us were like... I don't know. Do we really need it? You know, Zelda's going to be on the Wii U, so we don't need that. It's just... Re- and, and then it sold, what, 130 million units? That's so crazy, yeah. It's done all right, isn't it? And it instills, what, seven years after coming out, it's still the same price as it was when it came out? Yeah. Yeah. But look at where handhelds have come now. You know, you, there's so many good handhelds out now that people have gone to like the steam deck and the lenovo and and loads of others now and i know that's kind of probably in the minority really because it's not really aimed at kids but Mm. you know i've got a switch in my house and a steam deck and marcus said said to me a couple of days ago daddy for my birthday can i have a a a steam deck you said (laughs) no and i said how about I buy myself an OLED and you can have this one? <laughs> no, I, I, I said, so basically you're just using him to get a new. No, toy. no, I said he's. I said he's too. He's too young. He's only six. Yes, um, I, but the thing is though, what the Steam Deck and the Switch are not very. Di- you know, not a lot of difference in price, are they? No, there isn't, and that's what's crazy. The Switch is still what three hundred quid and three fifty for the OLED. I know you can get some deals maybe 20 30 pounds off each but yeah. what's the basic stream deck what 350 let's have a look because i can't remember the price 300 so the LED pounds. ones are gone down oh. until they get rid of them okay right? sorry so you can get the, the the cheapest models 350 yeah so it's pretty much if you have a oled the o- suite, so they're pretty much the same but they? the oled the cheapest oled steam deck is 480 yeah so but we, you want an OLED, don't you, Webby? Nah, I'm quite happy with my Steam Deck. I mean, I play. I still play it every fucking day. It's such a good system. It really I you is. It the screen. No, I only scratch the screen slightly. I don't even notice oh. it when I'm playing games. So oh, I, I dropped it on the floor. 
Yeah, so it's weird that you don't mind him playing with the Switch, but didn't he drop the Switch? Yeah, that's fine. That he drops all the time. Yeah. I don't yeah, so you, you don't so you don't want him to drop a three hundred and fifty pound handheld, but you don't mind him dropping a three hundred pound handheld. Well, he, well, he does play my Steam Deck a lot as well. Yeah. But then he'll be sitting on the sofa, and you make sure he won't like run yeah, around with it, yeah, like that. You got to teach him to be respectful with stuff like that, ain't you? At a yeah. young age, because then yeah. when that, that uh, people go on about that, that does shape how someone is later on in life. Yeah, if no, they're, he's, you know, he's they're good, taught yeah. to look after things and not break it. That, you, you get taught that at an early age, then you just do that for the rest of your life, don't you? Yeah. No, I mean, the, the Steam Deck's a great system, and I know there's more powerful handhelds out there now, but it plays everything. But they're not called Steam Deck, are they? But it pretty much plays everything that I can throw at it. It's, it, it's insane. It really is, you know? I mean, I play Final Fantasy fourteen all the fucking time on that thing and it just and every time i play it it just blows my mind that i can play an mmo like that on on a handheld it's insane you know it's a great device it really is i do want one it's just i can't justify spending that much money when i've got so much other stuff to play yeah yeah that's fair mate. i mean i've probably still got 40 switch games i've never played plus loads of 3ds games i've never played and stuff like that so it's just like ugh. yeah it's weird because before i bought the steam deck um i thought i was on an iron throw just because i don't really play handhelds all much before i got this like the switch didn't really get played much if i did i play it docked and, and all that and mate i just this gets used daily it's insane i just it's just great i sit on the save and i can play all my fucking awesome pc games on it. it's great you know, it you can fits, even play Cyberpunk a, on it, you know, and Red Dead and stuff if you wanted, you know? It's insane. It fits a, a place of something in your game and do not it, if you know what It I mean. does, yeah. It fits in, like, like you always had thing where you'd buy a PS... You could buy a PS4 or an Xbox, and then if you bought a Nintendo, that would complement it and would be something different to play. It's kind of like that, isn't it? Yeah. And the fact that I don't condone this by any stretch of imagination, but the fact that you can emulate as well, like I've got oh. Xbox 360 games on there, PS4 games, like all the Super Nintendo library, Mega Drive, and all the you know all the old school games, you know. But you know you can even emulate Switch games if you wanted to. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, wink. You know it's a great system. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I've forgotten where, where we were on the conversation now. <laughs> I don't know. I was talking about Super Mario when we got on the Steam. All right. Uh, let's move on then because time is ticking. Um, Darren, you played anything else? Uh, yeah. Well, it's obviously my daily logins on my bits and bobs. Um, but then I did. I have put a fair bit of time into fallout 4 on the ps5 Ooh. like the ps5 update thing for it can i ask a weird question why yep. is everyone playing fallout 4 on the playstation instead of the xbox i don't i don't understand well i had it on the ps4 so obviously it makes sense that i'd use the ps4 version on the ps5 all right i just want because i've noticed peeves is playing it on the ps5 and so is a few other people um, and i'm like I think it was a freebie, wasn't it, at one point on the PlayStation? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's why. Well, so Webby, uh, when it came out, the the new next-gen patch, yeah. uh, Digital Foundry put it out that the next-gen version wasn't even working on Xbox. Lies. Oh, yeah, there was, like, some massive issue with something yeah. on there, when wasn't there? When you put it on, like, next gen quality or performance mode it was just on like normal right. so apparently it was the same if not worse than the xbox one x version okay weird I was, yeah I, th I think they may have patched it recently so it does work but maybe yeah there is a double they maybe, have updated it yeah so maybe that's why initially they didn't do it but but yeah, there's there's still slight issues with it. There's like flickering here and there. Um, that I think's the most common problem I've actually had. 
on it. Um, yeah, it's it's the least my least favourite of the Fallout games, but I just had that itch, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I've stayed the, the hell away from Preston Garvey. Are you? He's just fucked off back to <laughs> you know the Minuteman guy who who oh. gives you the quest line where it's like go to all the encampments. Oh. Get all the people to love you, so you get these pop-ups during the middle of your missions that all your camps are getting attacked. Oh, fuck that. So I've just stayed away from all the settlements and him. <laughs> he buggered off back to uh, like the first area, like where you start the game in sunny, happy time. Um, uh, and I've just been sort of like flitting around the wasteland, exploring and killing shit. I do. With slight bits of like, oh, I remember this, I remember that part, I remember that. Because obviously I did play it a fair bit back in the... Um, yeah. But yeah, I just had the urge and thought I'd give it an update. The only thing I will say that's kind of missing from it, as far as I'm aware, I don't think the game has any HDR support, does it? Oh, right. I, didn't, I don't know. Yeah. It's sort of still. I imagine it's probably an aesthetic choice because it still has that sort of vibrant, colourful sort of thing to it, mm. which was very much the 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 uh, what's it with four. Whereas Fallout Three was very gritty, and Fallout New Vegas was pretty much the same. Right. Whereas there's a lot more colour, obviously, and stuff in in four. Plus, it doesn't have a level cap of, like, level 20 or 30 or whatever it used to be in the old games, which was annoying mm. as fuck because you'd hit level cap before you were even halfway through the story or whatever. Depending on how you played it. Mm. I know if you can mainline it, you can apparently, like, completely mainline and run through the, the story pretty quickly, but I don't generally play things like that. No. But yeah, it's it looks nice. It runs well. Um, you've you've got a multitude of different options for it, so you can have it in like quality at 60 fps. Although it's, it aims for 60 fps, there are dips at certain points. Uh, the easiest thing to do is watch the Digital Foundry video, and they'll explain it all on okay. there. But yeah, there's like so many different types. There's like a 40 fps option. I think there's a 120 fps option. There's a quality option and a frame rate option for the graphical settings, etc. Nice. But yeah. Just I think I've got to say it's good that they've um, just give it as a free next gen upgrade when you think that. Um, yes, they could have Stone done Run the classic just, um, yeah. special edition or 10 year yeah. anniversary edition thing. Yeah. Like what they've done with. Um, or Sony have done with um, Last of Us Part 2 remastered when it's not really that remastered and things like that. Greedy fuckers, mate. It, I, I still think they could have... They probably could have got away with charging a tenner just to do the upgrade um, for the new things, but it was quite clever of them actually doing it around the popularity of the TV show. Yeah. Plus, I, I think yeah. just just like Cyberpunk Edge yeah. Runners did like really well for Cyberpunk boosting the player numbers back out. I think Fallout Four like shot back up the Steam charts, didn't it, when they released yeah. the the yeah. update? Yeah, they yeah, made good. more money just by doing that, didn't they, than try to charge a tenner. Maybe they just thought, well, and it did work if so many more people bought it. And I think Xbox that went up like four hundred percent like from the last five years or something so it's pretty you know sort of good it's, it's all you don't have to just do it how sony do it which is nice uh how's that oh all right mate. job done back to you again yeah okay so the last new game i played is a little game called x defiant oh yeah, yes released this week not long after the podcast recording last week, no, was it? Free to play Ubi shite game. So <coughs> I take it you guys haven't played this at all? No. I have tried a couple of matches in it. Okay, so what's your thoughts on it then, Graham? I don't play a lot of military shooters, but I didn't find a lot 
that was different from anything else that I've played, if I'm honest. I thought they could have... I thought they could have leaned into it a bit with their characters and maybe given them, I don't know, given the sort of the Splinter Cell type characters sort of some sort of stealth and the hackers some sort of jammer or something. Do you know what? Something along those lines. But it just seems a little bit generic. It's not bad for what it is. No, but I don't know whether it's going to encourage people away from like Warzone and Apex and, and things like that, really. No, I've it, heard it's very similar to, like, COD. It's very fast-paced and twitchy. It is. Yes. Uh, the I mean, I've played this on PC. I've also downloaded this on my Xbox, but not played it on there. Um, and the first match I played, it just completely reminded me of Overwatch because there was a game mode in Overwatch that, that was yeah. the same where there's, Follow like... The package. Yeah, there's, like, this vehicle... And then you've got oh, to the stand, truck, protect yeah, the truck. Yeah, you've got to stand next to it while it travels <laughs> yeah. across the map. You've got to get it to the end of the map. Um, but the other game modes is like yeah. your bog standard, like there's three zones on the map. You've got to fight to capture them, and whoever holds them the longest is the winner. Um, you know, and then there's one which is like King of the Hill type mode. I mean, my initial impressions was the gunplay feels really nice because it's fast and fluid. Um, and I really like the map design because they they take maps yeah. from a Ubisoft game. So especially the division ones, I recognise straight away because I got like the plane from the division two and and the surrounding area, which 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 makes for a pretty cool map. Um, you know, and they've got you know a few other maps from the division and and, and other games. However. I understand it's a I understand it's a free to play game. I can hear some sounds in the background from someone's mic. It's TV it's or really something. Cool. Um but it's really <sighs> stingy with the characters. So basically there's a bunch of factions. There's like five factions, I think. Just off the top of my head. I'm just trying to find a bit on my stream. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it's like five factions. But when I was looking at it, there's like only four characters available. So that, for each I, faction, or is that just no, in general? No, just in general. So I'm just looking at the screen now. I've just paused it. So there's yeah, it's five factions: Cleaners, Phantoms, Libertad, Echelon, and Deadsec. Right? You can only play one from the Cleaners, Phantoms, Lit. Li can't talk libertad and echelon but dead sec they're all locked out so i'm guessing you got to pay for all these characters right but they're mm. really shit characters so the ghost recon characters are from ghost recon <laughs> phantoms i mean I, did you ever even play ghost recon phantoms or like, what the fuck game i don't even remember that game yeah no I don't. it's probably a mobile game Maybe. And the cleaners are just the cleaners from the division. There's no actual, like, mainline division characters. And then the Libertad's obviously from Far Cry 6, right? Uh, the Echelon characters are not... Then Sam Fisher isn't even one of the characters. They're just kind of generic, shitty-looking characters. And the Dead uh, Sex will introduce all him out. when the game's interest wanes, just to <laughs> retain the player numbers. Well, maybe. They brought Sam Fisher out. Oh, battle Pass. Well, they maybe. brought Vaz out. They've brought Vaz in from Far Cry. So. <sighs> That'll happen. So I don't know, man. It's just. I, I can see where they're going because, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's going to be end up like Rainbow Six Siege where they add about 50 fucking characters in it or more. But. I don't know, because it's free free to play. They're going to try and get as much money out of people as they can. Now, the f I've, got, I'm, I've got mixed emotions about this because I used to be a fan of U Ubisoft in the back, back in the day, but we've moaned about them a lot the last Same, few yeah. weeks or so about what yeah. they've been doing. And I'm not going to go into the wokeness anymore because I think we're all sick of all talking about it now. But... It's just the, the gameplay itself is pretty fun. It is fun, but it's just, is it going to get old quick? You know, with the limited amount of maps, with the same kind of, 
game, you know, game modes and the lack of characters that you can play as unless you buy them because each character has got different abilities. So like the, um, the, uh, the echelon one person who you can play as has this ability where they can spot the enemy characters and see them through walls and stuff. And then you've got the cleaner guy who can send like a drone out that sprays fire at people. Like so, so, so they've all got their different abilities. And mm-hmm. I don't know, like I found like with Rainbow Six Siege, when it the first two or three years, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. But then it got to a point where it just got silly because I had too many characters all with really stupid abilities just because I wanted to add more and more and more to sell the fucking season passes and I feel like this will get that way itself as well yeah Um, they went on to like year 7 and stuff didn't they (laughs) and other bits it went for years still going now yeah you know and and, and, and it's like this right the core gameplay of Rainbow Six Siege is really good however it just got really silly and I just this just feels like it's trying to be a bit like COD, a bit like Overwatch, a bit of a mishmash. And Ubisoft have been guilty of doing this in the past with other games, and then they're not popular, and then within six months to a year they just kill it, you know. Like that. Yeah, what was the other one? Royale game that that they one, yeah. yeah. You know, I can't even remember the name of it because it was so shit. You know what I mean? And they killed that off within six or seven months. So the core cool gameplay here is really fun. I'm not. I'm going to give them that, right? But I don't see it having lasting appeal. I really don't because, especially in the PC space, there's there's too much competition out there. You know, you have got Warzone, you got Counter Strike, you got Valorant, you got various other games. You know, I just don't see this really fitting in. You know what I mean? So it'd be interesting to see where it goes obviously it's on console as well it's on xbox and playstation there is cross play however what's automatically turned on in the options is you do not match with people using different control methods so all the mouse and keyboard players are stumped together and all the controller people are stuck together yeah um so yeah so you know i mean there, there is that there and that's automatically on so that really, in my mind, puts cross-play off between PC and console straight away, unless you're on PC playing, playing with a controller. Um, some people would say that's good. Some people would say that's bad. Um, I'm not really fussed either way, to be honest, because I'm shit with both. But um, I, as I say, I really like the map design. Really, really good. Uh, it's really cool going back to especially some of those Division maps, because I've played a fuckload of the Division I just think they shouldn't have been so stingy with the characters that you can initially play as. And I really hope that um, they they sort that out um, and had some more game modes. That's all I can say, really. I think it's still been sort of thrown out there in semi-beta, hasn't it? Like, although the game's finished, they're probably just still putting it out there seeing what the reception is rather than sort of like pushing ahead with a load of stuff if the game isn't going to yeah. do fantastic I mean I don't know I mean I've seen you know a, a mishmash of opinions online you know a lot of people saying it's good a lot of people saying it's shit you know as you usually do I haven't seen a just a general consensus one way or the other so you know it's actually an Ubisoft game that they've pushed out without being completely shit which is a massive surprise to me at the minute but um i mean i hope it does okay <laughs> because i say it's fun but for only time will tell right uh, true. Well, have you guys played anything else i know you guys felt you sounded like you were kind of wrapping up quite quite a few of you um well i've only played a couple of more really yep which i'll go through very very quickly um, I talked about Wrath, Aeon of Ruin, the other week. Yeah. And I've bounced, I have bounced off this game hard. Oh, really? It's got bugs. It's got... Well, it, it's in Unity. It's not in the Quake engine. I, I just find the enemies are massively bullet-spongy. So, 
with the shotgun, a lot of guys can be taken down with one blast. Some of them take two or three. If you've got the pistol, you have to shoot some of them like six or seven times. Oh, wow. And it's just a bit annoying. And it has bugs. Sometimes you shoot the bad guys and they get stuck in an animation. And it's just a bit frustrating. So unfortunately, I've put it down and I'm, I may go back to it. But I have logged many hours this week. I played the free DLC for Power Wash Simulator. Oh, <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've, I've been doing the Lara Croft free download levels. All oh, right. Um, and I, I was just looking earlier. I thought, how many hours have I played this game at the moment? And I'm up to I'm up to fifty five hours. <laughs> so there how you many go. coins has that game had? I know it's obviously had the Lara Croft and the Final Fantasy one. I don't know if there's been any uh, others. There has. They did a Warhammer one. They've done a Back to the Future one, and they've uh, done a SpongeBob SquarePants one. Believe it or not. Weird. So wow. there's all sorts of weird, all sorts of weirdness in there. But, um, yeah, the late, I think the very, very latest one is, is it's Warhammer 40, 40K? Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah so possibly, because they've, they've got their skulls thing going on at the moment, haven't they? Like, where yeah. they do, like, a lot of promotions and events in all of their different titles, because I saw Vermin Tide had an update and Dark Tide as well. Yeah, this that's all about yeah. Two, Tomb Raider, Midgar, SpongeBob, Back to the Future. There's a seasonal one for Santa's Workshop and the Warhammer 40k. Wow. But a lot of the, a lot of the, um, yeah, it's quite a weird mix, right? It is. But uh, a lot of the packs are only about six pound, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Power Wash Simulator was on PS Plus. So, you know. It's not going to break the bank, is it? And I do find myself playing it, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, but I'm enjoying myself, so I don't care. <laughs> there we go. Never played it, but I imagine it's kind of slightly addictive once you get going. It, it's kind of got that slightly um, satisfying sort of... Um, sort of element to it. It is, but, quite, um, no, it, is. it is quite fun, isn't it? But it's like it's one of those things... I'm, like when I was put, putting it on, I was thinking it's just like doing chores at home. So why am I doing this? I'm turning it off now. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I do know what you mean. But um, what what I like about it is I just tend to stick it on in an evening for half an hour, have a cup of tea on the go, and it, it's just kind of it's low maintenance. There's no pressure. There's no urgency. You you just play it at your own pace, really. Yeah. Well, you'd want presser in a power wash simulator. <laughs> oh, I like yes. it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> he writes all of his own jokes, you know. He does. <laughs> no, but that's that's really all I've played. Wow. Anyone else played anything? Nope. Right. Well, I play four because obviously that season's still rolling. Yes. At the moment, for the next few months. I've been having some good fun on that, to be honest. I actually feel quite beastly as a character for the first time in ages playing Diablo 4. Yeah. Because you... you can sort of build your character up quite nicely. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you do sometimes be like, oh, that bit of gear's amazing. I can't wait to roll for something on that. And you just rolls on it a shite and you end up trashing it because it <laughs> ruins the whole item. Because it keeps re-rolling the same bloody thing over and over again. And you're like, if I didn't want it the first time or the second time, why would you give it to me again? There's four other options there. Give me one of those. Hmm. Cool. All right. Well, I've only played a couple cool. more games. I'm going to rinse through pretty quick then. So I just want to give a shout-out to Colin. I had some good games of Warzone uh, over the, the last couple of days. So that's been really good fun. I'm still playing PUBG because the um, Arangal Classic is still going. I'm not sure when that runs out, actually. Um, 28th of May, so in a couple of days. So I'm just trying to play that as much as I can because, obviously, that's my favourite map. Tuesday, yeah. All time, and then it's going to be back to the rotation of, we, you know, just random map that pops up, which is fucking annoying. 
So, and then the, the only other game I've briefly played is a game that I haven't played for ages, um, but I thought I'd download it on my Steam Deck, um, and that's Dead Cells. Talking about roguelikes nice. uh, earlier. Um, is that with the DLC? Because there's a there's a Castlevania DLC they did with it, didn't they? Yeah, I've not no, I've not downloaded any DLC for it. I just wanted to. I just felt like playing something on the Steam Deck that I didn't really have to think about, and yeah, um, yeah, it's just it's a, it is a roguelike. You die, and then you can like upgrade later on to pull like your money and some stuff over and that. Um, but um, yeah, nice graphics, nice gameplay. Always go for the sword and the bow and arrow. Um, it's a bit like a Metroidvania because the map, uh, you know, you can explore the map and has the little map in the corner showing you all the routes and stuff like that and it's just a fun little game so it's been like one fun of my times. that's been one of my steam deck games apart from obviously final fantasy 14 um and that's everything you know oh no i lie i did play some destiny 2 this week with um d twin because I felt a little bit betrayed, actually. So, it, because basically the new DLC is out soon, right? Um, it, it said that all of the new DLC, all, all of the old DLC, is free to play, and I hadn't played the latest one, so we started to play it, and I was streaming it on Twitch at the same time. I was getting in, you know, been doing quite a bit of streaming this week. And then it got to a point where it was like, you do not own the DLC. I was like, what? It's meant to be all free. You know what I mean? Well, they're uh, going to try and sell you the new thing, aren't they? They want to make money. Right? No, so the no, because the new DLC is not, not, not out yet. So they put a thing up saying all the old DLCs are free to play at the minute. Yeah, it must be like the latest one before no, this update maybe isn't free yet. It, it is, but only on the PlayStation. Oh. Yeah. So if you've got Gay Station Plus, you, you can play the last DLC that they released, but if you're on PC, you got to buy it. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that, because apparently it's not very good. So I said to D-Twin, I was, sorry, mate, I'm not going to run through this with you because I'm not buying it. So we 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 stopped playing, Ooh. but it's a shame because I was getting into it because obviously still all these years later, it's still a gorgeous looking game, and the gameplay's really smooth as well. Still, you know, one of the best feeling shooters out there, uh, and I say it's really good looking as well. But it's just I'm not paying for the DLC because I, I like whenever I've bought the Destiny. DLC and the past have always felt ripped off because I'm one of those people where I like to play the, the campaign bit and I'll maybe dip into a bit of the you know the the other stuff but usually I can't can't be asked so usually the campaign's about four hours and then and then it's all to places you've been to before anyway so you feel really ripped off whereas all the people that are big into these games are like oh but it's all about the end game and grinding and I was like, I can't be fucked with that shit, man. I just want to fucking play a game. You know what I mean? So I was full, full off it quite hard. So I was quite intrigued to play uh, the last DLC and I was just very upset. So, yeah. Shame. Yeah, it's a shame. So, and I think that's everything. I'm just double checking. Yes. So, all is good in the hood. That's it. It's all applied. I think one in the bag. I think we're done, dudes, aren't, aren't we? Sounds like. I think we are done. Just oh, time. Oh. I might as well mention the, the new Fortnite season started anyway. Oh, yeah. Although, if you play Fortnite, I'm sure you're completely aware. Oh, yeah. Everyone plays Fortnite still, mate. It's kind of got like a weird Mad Max stroke Fallout crossover thing going on with it. Okay. A little bit of X-Men spattered in. 
And they, I think someone leaked online that there's going to be upcoming collaborations with like Alan Wake, Destiny, and The Elder Scrolls. Right. Amongst others. I did actually play a little bit of Fortnite with Marcus during the week. Um, it's still quite fun, actually, really. I know we take the piss out of it, but it's still fun. But you only play that Save the World mode, don't you? You don't play the Battle Royale. Oh, and the rock band mode I play and muck about with. Yeah. I have mucked around with the Lego stuff before, which is, it's fun, but it's very much sort of like quite in depth. So you yeah. end up playing it for ages and it's just like, no, I'll play something else. Like, yeah. That's fair enough. But there is loads and loads of like weird made content from creators. Oh, so it's turned, in that game as well now. There's loads of weird stuff in it as well. So it's turned into kind of like a Roblox well now, isn't it? Sort of, yes. In a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Is that it then, guys? Are we done? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sounds like. I think we're there. Cool. Right, on that note then, um, it's been emotional. I thank you very much all for coming on. Uh, so for me, Mark Webb, <coughs> Gamma Tag, Piss on the DSD, my D, Webby, 360G. And Graham, or G Hamox 14. Nick Foltz on a Twitter and Twitch. That's just so switch. So thank you very much. We will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>